This is my presentation on the topic PVT behavior of gas mixtures, ideal and real gases in thermodynamics 2. So an ideal gas is defined as a gas whose molecules are spaced far apart so that the behavior of a molecule is not influenced by the presence of other molecules, a situation encountered at low densities. And drill gases approximate this behavior closely when they are at a low pressure or high temperature relative to their critical point values. So, the PVT behavior of real gases is expressed by more complex equations of state or by PV is equal to ZRT where Z is the compressibility factor. So, when two or more ideal gases are mixed, the behavior of a molecule normally is not influenced by the presence of other similar or dissimilar molecules and therefore a non-reacting mixture of ideal gases also behaves as an ideal gas. Air, for example, is conveniently treated as an ideal gas in the range where nitrogen and oxygen behave as ideal gases. So when a gas mixture consists of real or non-ideal gases, however, the prediction of the PVT behavior of the mixture becomes rather involved. And the prediction of the PVT behavior of gas mixtures is usually based on two models, Dalton's law of additive pressure and Amagat's law of additive volumes. And we will discuss this in the next slide. Dalton's law of additive pressures. So the pressure of a gas mixture is equal to the sum of the pressure each gas would exert if it existed alone at the mixture, temperature, and volume, figure 13 to 5. So we have here three containers that are identical in size, and we see that the volumes and the temperature inside the container are all the same. So in the first container, we have gas A, and in the second container, we have gas B, and the pressure in container A is PA, and the pressure in container B is PB. So if the two gases inside the container A and B is combined or mixed together in the third container, what we will find is that the pressure of the two gases is going to be PA plus PB. So that's what Dalton's law of additive pressure, a mixture of two ideal gases. So here we have Amagat's law of additive volume. So the volume of a gas mixture is equal to the sum of the volumes each gas would occupy if it existed alone at the mixture temperature and pressure. So we have here below the figure of three containers, gas A, gas B, and also the combination of gas A and gas B. So, Amagat's law of additive volumes for a mixture of two ideal gases. So, Dalton's and Amagat's laws hold exactly for ideal gas mixtures, but only approximately for real gas mixtures. This is due to intermolecular forces that may be significant for real gases at high densities. For ideal gases, these two laws are identical and give identical results. So Dalton's and Amagat's laws can be expressed in the equation that we have below. So what Dalton's law states mathematically is that the pressure of a mixture is going to be equal to the component pressure of each of the component of that mixture provided that each of the component is at the same volume and temperature. And what Amagat's law states 
mathematically is that the volume of a mixture is going to be equal to the component volumes of each of the component of that mixture provided that each of the component is at the same temperature and pressure and both are exactly for ideal gases approximate for real gases. So in these relations, Pi is called the component pressure and Vi is called the component volume. And here below we have a figure. So here we have a container on the left that contains a combination of two gases, oxygen O2 and nitrogen N2. And as you can see here on the right side of the container is shown the two gases, oxygen O2 and nitrogen N2. And as we observe both pressure is the same and the unit is KPA and the temperature as well which is in kelvins. However, their volumes is different. Oxygen's volume is 0 0.3 meter cube and nitrogen's volume is 0 0.7 meter cube. And when combined, we have exactly one meter cube in the left. So we need to note that Vi is the volume component that would occupy if it existed alone at Tm and Pm and not the actual volume occupied by the component in the mixture. In a vessel that holds a gas mixture, each component fills the entire volume of the vessel. So therefore, the volume of each component is equal to the volume of the vessel. Also, the ratio Pi over Pm is called the pressure fraction and the ratio Vi over Vm is called the volume fraction of component I. The volume of a component would occupy if it exists alone at the mixture where T and P is called the component volume which is in the ideal gases. It is equal to the partial volume Yi Vm. So for ideal gases, Pi and Vi can be related to Yi by using the ideal gas relation for both the components and the gas mixture which is shown in the equation below. So the equation is strictly valid for ideal gas mixtures since it is derived by assuming ideal gas behavior for the gas mixture and each of its components. The quantity YIPM is called the partial pressure identical to the component pressure for ideal gases. And the quantity YIVM is called the partial volume identical to the component volume for ideal gases. Note that for an ideal gas mixture, the mole fraction, the pressure fraction, and the volume fraction of a component are identical. So Dalton's law of additive pressure and Amagat's law of additive volumes can also be used for real gases often with reasonable accuracy. This time, however, the component pressure or component volumes should be evaluated from relations that take into account the deviation of each component from ideal gas behavior. One way of doing that is to use more exact equations of state instead of the ideal gas equation of state. Another way is to use the compressibility factor shown in the figure, where Pm, Vm is equal to Zm, Nm, Ru, Tm, and Zm is equal to the sum of Yi, Zi. So the compressibility factor of the mixture Zm can be expressed in terms of the compressibility factor of the individual gases Zi by applying equation 13 to 9 to both sides of Dalton's law or Amagat's law of expression and simplifying, we obtain the equation 13 to 10.
where ZI is determined either at TM and PM Dalton's law or at TM and PM Amagat's law. For each individual gas, it may seem that using either law gives the same result but it does not. So the compressibility factor approach in general gives more accurate results when the ZI in equation 13 to 10 are evaluated by using Amagat's law instead of Dalton's law. This is because Amagat's law involves the use of a mixture pressure or PM which accounts for the influence of intermolecular forces between the molecules of different gases. Dalton's law disregards the influence of dissimilar molecules in a mixture on each other. As a result, it tends to underpredict the pressure of a gas mixture for a given PM and TM. Therefore, Dalton's law is more appropriate for gas mixtures at low pressures and Amagat's law is more appropriate at high pressures. Note that there is a significant difference between using the compressibility factor for a single gas and for a mixture of gases. The compressibility factor predicts the PVT behavior of a single gas rather accurately but not for the mixture of gases. When we use compressibility factors for the components of a gas mixture, we account for the influence of like molecules on each other. The influence of the similar molecules remains largely uncounted. Consequently, a property value predicted by the, this approach may be considered different from the determined experimental value. And another way of predicting the PVT behavior of a real gas mixture is to treat it as a pseudo-pure substance with critical properties P9Cr and T9Cr. And here we have the pseudo-pure substance and the equations for that. So we have PCRM is equal to the sum of YITCRI and TCRM is equal to the sum of yi tcri so that's all for this topic sir and i hope you like my presentation and thank you for watching